Detective Chimp has been in comics since the early 1950s when the idea of a crime-solving chimpanzee was cutting-edge storytelling. But the furry investigator has changed with the times over the past 70 years. So how did he go from a simple, trained circus animal to an immortal champion of magic that fights against all threats to the magical realm? Let's find out. It's always fun talking about a crime-solving chimpanzee. I mean, at the end of the day, who doesn't love chimpanzees? One chimpanzee in particular used to be this weird, obscure character that when I was telling people about him, they didn't know if I was pulling their leg or actually telling the truth. Of course, nowadays, with the internet at everybody's fingertips and the availability of previously hard-to-find comic issues in digital format, nothing is obscure anymore. And the character I'm talking about today is Detective Chimp, alias Bobo T. Chimpanzee, created by a wonderful solid Silver Age duo of John Broom and Carmine Infantino, and he first appeared in The Adventures of Rex the Wonder Dog No. 4 in 1952. It's also important to remember that Bobo T. Chimpanzee was the name given to him by humans. His real name is a screech and three grunts, kind of like, ee, woo, woo, woo. And it's important to remember that he's not a monkey, he's a chimpanzee. And by all outward appearances, he's just a common chimpanzee. He has dark fur, stands a little over three and a half feet tall, and weighs about 76 pounds. But there are a few things that set him apart from his primate brethren. He has a tendency to wear a deer stalker cap that's reminiscent of Basil Rathbone's portrayal of Sherlock Holmes. And he also wears a matching tweed suit that looks like it would be right at home on a New England College Professor of Philosophy's wardrobe. And he has no unusual physical abilities. Well, I mean, not unusual for a chimpanzee. He does have the agility and strength of a chimpanzee, but no superpowers. His power is knowledge and deduction. He's like Batman with better table manners. He's also no stranger to magic, but we'll get to that later. Detective Chimp does have a couple of key weaknesses. First off, he's not able to swim. And like, is that a real thing? Are chimpanzees able to swim in the wild? I'm curious, now I wanna find out. But don't worry, I'm not gonna throw a chimpanzee in the swimming pool or anything crazy like that. I'm gonna check Wikipedia. And occasionally, he has trouble getting the respect he deserves from humans. Honestly, I have no problem respecting a chimpanzee. Any chimpanzees ask me, I respect them because I heard they'll rip your face off. Here's how things started for Detective Chimp. Back in 1952, when he made his debut as a Silver Age backup feature in Rex the Wonder Dog, Bobo was simply a very smart ape, owned by animal trainer Fred Thorpe of Oskaloosa County, Florida. Why am I not surprised that the guy with an exotic pet lives in Florida? He was called Bobo at the time. Fred was impressed with Bobo's intelligence and taught the young chimp to ride a bicycle and help out feeding the other animals. When Fred was murdered, Bobo used his instincts and almost human intelligence to lead County Sheriff Edward Chase to the killers. You know what? Where exactly was Carol Baskin on the night of Fred Thorpe's disappearance? Sheriff Chase adopted Bobo and the chimpanzee acted as a helping mascot, for what I can only assume was a very, very lonely Southern lawman. At the time, Bobo couldn't speak, but he could make himself understood with series of like pantomime and performance things. Bobo solved numerous small town crimes, murder she wrote style, often with a circus theme and sometimes not even involving the sheriff at all. Can you imagine how deflating that would be for those Florida crooks to have their criminal enterprises toppled by a chimpanzee who didn't even think he needed the sheriff for backup? Bobo's intelligence and skills gradually increased. It wasn't just his detective skills either. He learned how to play checkers and to ride an ostrich. Though not at the same time. Nobody can do that. Despite his impressive ostrich, checkers, murder-solving skills, Bobo sort of faded into obscurity for 30 years. It's still so hard for me to grasp that the world existed without a comic book crime-solving chimpanzee for nearly three decades. Those were some dark, dark times. But 
At least we had Sam Simeon, the guerrilla private investigator that was featured in the 1960s classic Angel and the Ape. Bobo picked up some bad habits in his years out of the spotlight. He became a chain smoker and developed a fondness for booze. In DC Comics Presents number 35 in July 1981, Rex the Wonder Dog took Bobo to the Fountain of Youth, where he gained the ability to speak to all living creatures, even humans, in their own language, as well as, well, you know, the eternal youth thing. That's where the immortality came from. In 1989, Detective Chimp's backstory was explored in an issue of Secret Origins. While in his natural jungle environs, he accidentally swallowed two microscopically small alien simians, Wynad and K-Ram, as well as their spaceship. The two mini space monkeys use their advanced technology to amplify Bobo's brain. What are the chances that the aliens he swallowed were actually monkey aliens? I mean, that probably only happens, what, 30% of the time? The chimp ran into an American scientific expedition, and thanks to his new alien-enhanced brain, he was able to save the head scientist from being murdered. After patting themselves on the back for a job well done, the monkey aliens returned to their home planet. The scientists brought Bobo to America, where he was taken in by trainer Fred Thorpe. And the Silver Age stories unfolded. But this time around... Bobo eventually attained the power of speech, something his 1950s version never had. Also, being more ambitious in this incarnation, he started up a private detective agency in Oskaloosa County. The agency proved to be quite a success, and Bobo made enough money and enough shrewd investments over the years to ensure he no longer had to work. Don't you love a good American success story that shows all you need to make it to the top are two little aliens to enhance your brain and a trip to the fountain of youth? During this successful period, he was visited by another detective, John Jones, who of course is the Martian Manhunter, and this happened during an event called the JL Ape. Martian Manhunter thought Bobo's agency seemed to be doing better than his own. However, as an ape without civil rights, he wasn't allowed to stand as a person in court, and he found himself unable to collect unpaid bills. When the public began to forget him, he became an alcoholic. He never left the interdimensional bar called the Oblivion Bar. It changed management twice during the time he spent there until the establishment was acquired by Jim Rook, also known as Nightmaster. Detective Chimp also occasionally worked with the Bureau of Amplified Animals alongside his old friend Rex the Wonder Dog. Sadly, the Bureau of Amplified Animals just kind of faded away without explanation. Bobo became a member of Mensa, proving that his intelligence was greater than 98% of humans. Honestly, not that impressive. I've known a lot of humans. They're stupid. Detective Chimp had a long-standing partnership with four other detectives as the Croatoan Society. The group of detectives met regularly at the House of Mystery, And in addition to Detective Chimp, membership included Elongated Man, Terry 13, Tim Trench, and Edogawa Sangaku. In yet another retcon, it was shown that Bobo was captured in Equatorial Africa in 1953 by Fred Thorpe, who sought to train him for his carnival act, Bobo the Detective Chimp. For the act, Detective Chimp was trained to answer some detective-related questions using a combination of signals and rewards, giving the illusion that he could discover the deepest secrets of the public. The success of the act lasted until Rex the Wonder Dog took Bobo to the Fountain of Youth. After he got that inspiration from the fountain, he decided being a fake detective was nowhere near as fulfilling as being an actual detective. During the build-up to Infinite Crisis, the Spectre attempted to destroy all magic and began killing wizards. Detective Chimp, while still mostly drunk, recruited a group of mystical characters gathered from the Oblivion Bar into battling the combined forces of Eclipso and the Spectre. This led to the formation of the group Shadow Pact. Making their triumphant debut in Day of Vengeance No. 1, their original membership included, in addition to Detective Chimp, Blue Devil, Enchantress, Nightmaster, Nightshade, and Ragman. The wizard Shazam reveals that the name Shadow Pact has been used many times throughout history by groups of mystics who champion lost causes. This prognosticates an ominous future for this new team. 
During these adventures, we discover that Bobo was not his real name. His name is revealed by the phantom stranger to be mostly an unpronounceable screech and three grunts, which translates as magnificent finder of tasty grubs. Hey, he should have found a grubs hub. Although lacking superhuman powers, Detective Chimp exhibits not only fine detective skills, but also the genius of a true tactician. Benefiting from the counsel of Phantom Stranger, at the time transformed into a mouse, he devises a plan to use the powers of Black Alice and Nightshade to confront the combined menace of Eclipso and the Spectre. Captain Marvel is defeated by the Spectre as he tries to defend the Rock of Eternity, and the rock is destroyed showering debris over the city of Gotham. Bobo helps clean up the demonic damage to Batman's hometown. He also captures the sin of Sloth, who had inhabited his good friend Rex the Wonder Dog. After the Rock of Eternity is reformed, and the sins re-imprisoned, and all magical influence cleaned out of Gotham, the dying Dr. Fate gives Detective Chimp his powerful helmet of fate. After finding it doesn't fit him, Detective Chimp convinces Captain Marvel to throw it to Earth to let fate choose its next bearer. But in Helmet of Fate, Detective Chimp, the helmet of Dr. Fate returns to Earth. Detective Chimp for a brief time bonds with it, granting him additional powers that he uses to assist the Gotham City Police in apprehending the villain Trickster. After struggling against the temptation of the helmet, Bobo sends it on another journey. In the information age, it's been shown that Bobo and Batman help each other on cases via a chat room. Also, the Riddler is known to chat with him, but he's unaware of the other two's identities. In the new 52, Detective Chimp appears in a brief cameo aiding Justice League United in rescuing Adam Strange from the Zeta Beam. In the 2016 DC Comics Rebirth Christmas special story, The Night We Saved Christmas, Detective Chimp teams up with Batman to solve the case of a dead elf and help Santa find his missing dog. Although, I'm pretty sure it was actually a reindeer. In the Dark Knight's medal event, Detective Chimp is one of the survivors of the invasion of the Dark Knights, alternate versions of Batman from a dark multiverse, and is seen at the Oblivion Bar alongside the Justice League, Kendra Saunders, Dr. Fate, and others. Bobo's close friend, the Nightmaster, the owner of the Oblivion Bar, is killed in this confrontation. Bobo later takes over the Nightmaster's bar and mystical duties. Bobo becomes a central figure in the new mystical team called Justice League Dark. Led by Wonder Woman, the team includes John Constantine, Zatanna, Dr. Fate, Man Bat, and Swamp Thing, among others. I think Detective Chimp's first television appearance was on Batman the Brave and the Bold, where he was portrayed by Kevin Michael Richardson. He showed up briefly on Teen Titans Go! in the episode You're Fired, this time voiced by Scott Minville. And he also showed up on Scooby-Doo and Batman, The Brave and the Bold, with Kevin Michael Richardson voicing the character once again. Detective Chimp is rumored to be part of the team featured in the upcoming live-action television series Justice League Dark that's being developed by J.J. Abrams for HBO Max. There are a lot of great chimpanzee characters of which one can be a fan. For instance, Lancelot Link, Secret Chimp, a live-action Saturday morning show from the early 70s that featured a chimpanzee secret agent on par with Maxwell Smart. Bedtime for Bonzo, this featured an orphan chimpanzee being loved and nurtured by future United States President Ronald Reagan. BJ and the Bear was like the Dukes of Hazard, but the muscle car was replaced by a big rig, Luke Duke was replaced with Greg Evigan of My Two Dads fame, and the pretty boy Bo was now the world's most adorable furry co-pilot bear, who, just to be clear, was a chimp, not a bear. Pogo of the Umbrella Academy gave us a CGI version of an intellectually advanced comic book chimpanzee. Although all these other chimpanzees are truly excellent in their own way, there is only one guy in a deer stalker hat that has investigated his way into my heart, and that, of course, is Detective Chimp. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you'll take the time to subscribe. Make sure that you get future episodes that are all about comic book themes, comic book characters, characters from comics and related media. Uh, never miss an episode by making sure you hit the bell for notifications. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. 
Let me know what you think about Detective Chimp down in the comments. And as always, until next time, remember, heroes are super.